please welcome Cal Penn. Cal, what's up, Thanks, man? How are, How are you, man? Thanks for having me. Uh, <laughs> is that Kumar? <laughs> That's the kind of love you want to hear. <laughs> Thank you. Now, we were talking about uh, diversity earlier, and yeah. some nerds are upset with people of color portraying hobbits. And in your book, you know, you talk about your own experiences with diversity yeah. casting. How difficult is it for a young actor to take a stand when they're asking you to portray what amounts to be a stereotype. Yeah, the, the, in the book, I talked about stories that are, you know, 20 years old, and, okay. and one of them in particular is, you know, walking into auditions and knowing it's between you and another guy. And you know the, the part is, you know, he might have an accent, the guy might have a particular job. None of those things alone make a stereotype, right? Plenty of people have accents. Plenty mm -hmm. of people are, you know, I, I remember hearing, oh, you had to play a cab driver, you had to play, play, play a store clerk. Those roles tend to be one note. They tend to be the butt of a joke. Ethnicity or race are tied to profession, and that's mm -hmm. the only reason your character exists. So if you take mm. that character out, the plot isn't advancing from point A to point Z. It's not going through an arc. And I think sometimes today we get confused between tokenization and representation. And mm. that's an important one to, to have because... Can you define that a little bit? Like, Yeah, look, I think tokenization is you've got a script in front of you and a producer or network exec says, uh, we need to just like make one of them a different ethnicity. Yeah, or, yeah, yeah. you know, we need to at least make the best friend Indian or black, yeah. you know, at least do that. And I think representation is understanding that we all have stories to tell. We all have certain agency in those stories. Mm -hmm. And that's changing a lot, yeah. you know? That's the last, like you said earlier, the last five years especially, thanks to streaming platforms in a large part, has changed the, the dynamic of what audiences... Is it true you were going on auditions and running into white actors in brownface? Yeah. <laughs> yes. How'd that make you feel? How did it make, how do you think it made me feel wonderful? No, it, it, uh... <laughs> you needed those credits I, on the resume. It, when you, when you tell that story now, I did need those credits on the resume. There was, there was a movie, a movie in particular I did called uh, Van Wilder, uh, one of my earliest movies with Tara Reid and Ryan Reynolds. They were both wonderful. Ryan, in fact, was so encouraging in terms of improv on that film. But I remember going into that audition, knowing it was between me and another guy. Uh, it was a part of an Indian exchange student. I didn't know who the other guy was, and I walk into the audition, and uh, I tell the story in the audiobook and the book in more detail, but basically it's a, it's a white dude in brown face. He had already signed in, and I was like, huh. See, you're all like, whoa, but this was common. It was fairly common, yeah. or at least it wasn't uncommon for that to happen. So I remember thinking to myself two things. One, my beef is rarely with another actor. Like, I understand the desperation of wanting a job, but I also was like, you're not allowed to have this job. Like, you can play Braden from Idaho, you're allowed to like, yeah, yeah, yeah. you're allowed to audition for Friends and Seinfeld, you know? Like, I'm getting this part. Yeah. But then I also was like, I wonder who told you to do this, right? Like, was it your agent? Yeah. Did you do it at home and then drive to the audition? Yeah. If so, did that increase your chances of getting pulled over? Yeah. Like, or did you come here and do it in the bathroom? Yeah. So it was, but, but the dynamic was an interesting one, which was just sort of like, I'm getting this part and then I'm gonna work with the producers on um, how to make the role a little more dynamic. There was the one South Asian woman at the time who was working in network TV gave me advice when I was debating whether or not I wanted to take the part. She said, how many things in the script are sort of problematic? Mm -hmm. And I said, well, like maybe 30. She goes, are there, <laughs> are there any jokes that are actually funny? I said, yeah, of course, it's actually a really funny script. She goes, okay, pick 10, pick 10 things that you think are cringeworthy. And why do you think they're cringeworthy? I was like, honestly, they're kind of boring jokes. They're jokes that have been made before on mm -hmm. The Simpsons or Seinfeld or something like that. I, I would just like to, she goes, great. Go to them with 10 things, those 10 things. Say that uh, those are 10 issues you have with the script, but you have to come up with 10 things that are funnier than what the writers came up with. Yeah, yeah, and I yeah. think as performers of color, we forget the agency that we have sometimes to make those changes or suggestions and it's like, that's why they hired you. Yeah, yeah. They know you're funny. Stop feeling like you don't belong here. And so that was yeah. just great advice. That's a great story. And I am so glad it wasn't Ryan Reynolds and Brown. Oh, no, no, he's wonderful. <laughs> oh, my, because I need Deadpool, bro. Could you imagine? Yeah. No, no. At the White House, you worked in outreach. I did, yeah. Right? So who took your old job when Trump took over? <laughs> was it Stacey Dash? I don't, I don't know. I don't yeah. know if she, I don't know how often she was in the building. I worked in the outreach office, also yeah. called the public liaison office. Uh, I worked mostly on outreach to young people, Asian Americans and Pacific Islanders and the arts community. Those are my three jobs. I don't know who had, if anybody, had that job in the former administration, but I know in the current one, they're, they're fully staffed. And, you know. Let's play a quick game of okay. word association. Oh boy, all right, all right. All right. Uh, give me the first thing that pops into your mind when okay. I say these things. Yes. People who only know you from Harold and Kumar. Uh, they show so much love. Let me tell you this, of all the jobs that I've had, especially like during the stories that we just told about, you know, wh whether I was waiting tables, I was a messenger, whatever. If my only job hazard now is that fans who have only seen Harold Lee Kumar, that's the only thing they've seen me in, 
they yell Kumar when I walk into a place. <laughs> or they like, they will just offer you free weed on the street. Like, what are you complaining about? Yeah. <laughs> That's your job hazard? Uh, Steve Bannon. Uh, uh. <laughs> That's how most people react to White Castles. <laughs> Yeah, that's it. That's all I had. That was just... That, <laughs> that was just... A, okay. Did Obama anyway. ever call you Kumar? You ever walk in uh, Obama and be like, Kumar? He, did ne he never called me that to my face, but I like to think that I left the room and then I was called that. Yeah. <laughs>